back in January, you wouldn't believe that AI could do this. Now 2025 showed us the future of AI, so let's look back quickly to what happened with AI in 2025 and what you can expect in 2026. So let's just quickly jump back to January of 2025 when AI was basically just a really good content generator. It was impressive, but also very unpredictable. I mean, you could really only ask it to do one thing at a time, and even then you had to really babysit it and just hope the output was usable. Now fast forward to the end of the year and AI has become the autonomous assistant we all hoped for. It can now build apps, automate your social media tasks, and even interact with tools without a lot of extra help. This is what's called agentic AI, and the shift away from basic content generators to agents is the defining shift of 2025. AI that doesn't just respond to your prompt, but can take action and do things for you. You. And the fact that we went from basic question and answer prompts to autonomous agents in under a year, I mean, that is insane. And it is already starting to change how we work, how we search, how we build online. So how did we get here so fast? And I mean, look, this transformation didn't just happen by accident. It was driven by intense competition to create the best, the newest, and the fastest AI models out there. And there were three major players that stood out for mainstream users. Those were OpenAI, Anthropic, and Google. Now, they all followed the same playbook, release a smarter model, connect it to the internet, and teach it to act on its own. And OpenAI shows us this perfectly. They started the year by launching deep research, and by October, that had evolved into Atlas, which is a full-featured browser built around ChatGPT. And I mean, sure, there were other releases along the way, plus a detour into creating an AI TikTok competitor. I mean, more on that in a second, I will definitely touch on it, but the fact is in 11 months, ChatGPT evolved from just answering basic questions to practically becoming the internet in a bot. And meanwhile, Anthropic was focused on the technical side of things. They developed Claude Code, which is a tool that helps you code faster through natural commands. And by the end of the year, Claude was able to fix eight out of 10 software bugs without a human interaction. Claude's skills and projects allowed you to use AI to help you finish your tasks faster with your own information. And they also introduced Model Context Protocol, which quickly became the absolute standard for connecting AI to apps and services, basically like a USB connection between AI and the internet. And this made automations much easier for everyone to use. And finally, Google took the do-it-all approach by embedding Gemini into absolutely, well, everything. AI overviews are all over the place, from Google search to your own Gmail inbox, answering questions without needing to click. And Gemini added a whole suite of products for every user under the sun. I mean, we have Nano Banana for image generation, Notebook LM for research, VO3 for video creation, and Jules for vibe coding. The message was very clear. Whoever you are, Google wanted Gemini to be the AI you were already using. And all this without even thinking about it. And this doesn't even cover everything. The pace was absolutely relentless. If you blinked, you literally missed another release. And look, I mean, we could probably spend a whole hour breaking down all of the different model updates and feature releases that came out in October and November alone, but the race to the top is no we're near over. And it's allowed the rest of us to start using AI tools in a way we never expected before. And I mean, nothing really captured the crazy speed and shift in how we use AI in 2025, quite like vibe coding. So much so that Collins Dictionary even named it their word of the year. The concept is very simple. Describe everything you want in a website or an app using completely natural language, everything from the basic functionality and key features to the general vibe you want. From there, AI just writes the actual code. 
And Cursor and Replit made this mainstream. Cursor became the go-to editor for developers who wanted AI assistance, offering suggestions that already understood everything about your entire code base. But then Replit took this one step further, allowing you to build and deploy full applications just by chatting with AI. But they weren't the only vibe coding apps out there. A huge wave of vibe coding apps changed who could become a dev basically overnight. And this includes Hosting Your Horizons, which you can check out using the link in the description down below. And I mean, with vibe coding, people who had never in their entire life written a line of code were building functional tools. Small businesses could prototype in hours instead of months, while developers moved at speeds that seemed absolutely impossible at the start of the year. And if you could describe what you wanted, Cursor could build it. The app itself went from version 1.6 to 2.1 in just two months. I mean, that is unbelievable. And Vibe Coders went from experimental tools to sophisticated dev environments, completely revolutionizing how we can build apps. But Vibe-coded projects came with drawbacks. A lot of the time they had bugs the AI couldn't fix and bloated code files. And AI could generate code that worked, but not always code that worked very well. Now, the best results came from collaboration where humans provided judgment and AI handled execution. But still, what made vibe coding stand out is how completely new it was. I mean, just think about it. In 2024, could you have thought that you could build an app without ever touching a single line of code. But I mean, while agentic AI was grabbing the headlines, generative AI was still growing and it got scary good. I mean, tools like Midjourney, Dolly3, and Nano Banana reached new levels of sophistication, which is a long way from the, I mean, 10 fingered hands and creepy blurred faces from just barely a year ago that AI could make then. And this even crossed into scrollable social media with the Sora 2 app. Suddenly, we were just flooded with UGC-style ads and content that was so good it was almost impossible to tell what is real and what is not. Can we cut? I think there's sand on my mark. But this created a completely new problem. These hyper-realistic images raised some valid fears. Deepfakes became more convincing, making it very hard to verify what is real in photos and videos. I mean, for example, take the Instagram account Granny Spills. A sassy grandmother whose advice on life and love went absolutely viral. Except for the fact that she just didn't exist. She was completely AI generated. She wasn't the only one out there like this. As the quality improved, we saw more videos of AI impersonating people and public figures. And this eroded trust and left a lot of us wondering, how can we tell what's real and what's AI generated? And finding the mistakes isn't as easy as it used to be. If you're consuming content, verifying sources matters more than ever now. I mean, if you're creating content, being authentic is becoming a competitive advantage. I mean, the people who can prove they're actually real are starting to really stand out. And I mean, despite all of this huge growth and innovation, 2025 also highlighted AI's limitations. I mean, for all that it can do, AI is still a very much a black box. We know what goes in, we know what comes out, but what happens in between is still a bit of a mystery. And it's a mystery even to the researchers who actually built it. I mean, AI shifted from basic to complex interactions and it has people asking what that means for the future. And it's very valid. I mean, should AI be able to book flights for you or handle your private data? From injection attacks to security risks, the concerns about safety and accountability are set to become one of the biggest conversations in 2026. And we actually go into this a little bit deeper in our video on AI browsers, which you can check out right here, and the link will also be in the description down below. I mean, the thing is, AI got really good at taking action, but it still doesn't really understand context. Just think about it. 
AI can book a flight for you and fill in all of your personal details, but it might not realize that booking an international flight at 5 a.m. is, I mean, a terrible idea. And it can write the most complex code, but still miss really basic logic errors that a human developer would spot right away. And that gap between capability and judgment, I mean, it's everywhere. And until we crack open that black box, it's not going anywhere. And by the end of the year, 78% of companies were using AI, which is up 55% from the year before. And it's more than just a magic trick. The question now is, how do we actually use it? And I mean, the AI tools that came out of 2025, like the agents, the vibe coding apps, the image generators, they're not going away. And they're going to keep just getting better. And the gap between people who know how to use them and people who don't know is only gonna get wider. And the, you know, prompt engineer hype has been replaced. I mean, as we realize, this is a skill everyone, absolutely everyone needs to learn, not just a handful of specialists. And at the end of the day, AI still can't understand context the way we can, and that's just true. It can do a lot, but it just doesn't understand when something is wrong. Plus, it's still hallucinating all the time. So even as it's evolved, we are still babysitting. Now for 2026, it's time to learn when to trust AI and when to step in. There's no need to chase every tool or become an absolute expert overnight. We all need to learn how to work with these systems and be the human who makes decisions no matter what. So, I mean, what would you build with AI this year? If you need some ideas, we're kicking off the new year with four videos on how you can use AI to help with your New Year's resolutions. From personal finance to finally committing to your fitness goals, we're gonna show you what's possible right now. And if you wanna check them out, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell so you know when the next video is coming. Now, thank you so much for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next one.